Traditionally, whenever we do one of these five reason style videos, we're speaking about why a band or a performer has been vilified by you know some of the former fans, either that or folks that never were going to be a fan in the first place. But we're going to do something a little bit different today. Instead, we're going to talk about the internet, and we're going to talk about heavy metal. We're actually going to kind of put the two together and actually talk about five reasons why the internet actually might have saved heavy metal. Now, I'm not implying that heavy metal couldn't have survived an internetless world from 1996 to present. Definitely is something that could have happened and thrived considering there were still plenty of magazines, not to mention still plenty of ways that marketing could have reached some of these bands uh, to uh, the audiences themselves. However, there'd be a lot of bands that wouldn't have existed, mostly because the internet has given new life to the way in which heavy metal is shared to the world and definitely some of the tools that are available have given new life to people that never thought before that they would ever have the skill or the talent or the ability to become a band and actually become successful. So let's talk about a couple of these reasons. Let's start with number five. Number five is that the internet is an easy way for a band or a performer to get heard. There's plenty of options out there. There's plenty of ways in which you can get heard on the internet. Even if you're not a band. I mean, I just talk about music and look at how many people have watched me. Not sure if that's a good thing or not. But as a band, you have YouTube, you have Twitch, you have uh, Bandcamp, you have a lot of different resources that are available uh, to have your music heard and have it put on these platforms. That way people can discover your music and that way your fans can continue to come back to your music. So based off of that, the uh, it is no longer just how many people purchase your albums and are able to put them in their CD players, which is something that you can't really track. Maybe somebody bought your album for $7 at a show, but they've never listened to it. It's something that just sat on the shelf, and they don't come back to the next show. They don't have that opportunity to become booked. Online, it's a little bit different, considering people are online as, as much as they are. So, naturally, they're going to have a little bit of music playing, and naturally, it could potentially be yours. And it's something that now, with brand new bands that perhaps were born on the internet, either that or brand new bands that are looking for a little bit of brand new exposure, or at least get themselves a couple of fans and, you know, shows under their feet, this is a great way not only to build some of that anticipation, but also gather fans. And, as an added bonus, you're able to potentially have fans internationally before you even have a show that really breaks the 100 people mark which is absolutely wild. Considering so many resources do exist online, it is no longer something where you, pure, uh, where, where you can purely feel like just a local band. Sometimes you're going to have that international appeal, all depending on how you do one M word. And it's something that we're going to talk about quite a bit throughout this video. Number four, the potential to grow your audience without label support. This is moving right along from what we were just talking about. With the M word, which is marketing, by the way, you are able to grow your audience without needing a major label contract or even a minor label contract or a label contract really at all. Instead of having to dig into your pocket or watch actually as your profits decrease based around the label putting their money into you, uh, this is something that you can do yourself and it's something that doesn't necessarily just have to be an album preview. Instead, you become your own greatest uh, marketing tool. You're able to do that with your own personality with your own humor, the things that perhaps you put on your Bandcamp or your YouTube page, you now are the master of your own destiny. If you have some wild, stupid, weird, diddly thing that you did in the studio that's not going to appear on the album, but was really, really funny, now you can put it on your webpage. Now you can post it on YouTube. Now your audience has the opportunity to see something uh, that's sort of behind the scenes instead of having to wait for the CD to be there and have a DVD associated with it and that might never be seen. It might never happen. And that could honestly be the silly thing that gains you a lot more attention. You never know when something is going to go viral or whenever something is going to circulate among the community and gain you that positive attention that you need. And this is all something you can do without label support. Now, labels do provide some online marketing. It's something that's not just restricted, by the way, to just blurbs on websites. However, if you can do this without having to go through that process, it's definitely a positive. And whenever you're a young band just getting started, this is something that's absolutely essential and necessary, considering you're not just going to magically have label support whenever you first begin. And this is another way that the internet has saved metal, considering now 
metal personalities have become a little bit bigger and a little bit more widely known and vibrant. And based off of that, it is now something that's a little bit more out there and has given folks the opportunity to watch Varg talk about his homeland, either that or maybe have Dave Mustaine discuss why a track was written the way in which it was. With all the interviews that exist on YouTube, it's something that also boosts that benefit and gives fans new insight to the music that they love. Number three is that M word, marketing baby. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Now you might think that there is way too much marketing these days, considering every band on Facebook seems to be promoting some sort of product, whether it be their album, whether it be a t-shirt, whether it be a show that's upcoming, whatever it might be. But as a band, that is something that you have to do. You have to promote yourself. You have to market yourself. You have to give folks a reason to scope you out. But there's a lot of other great tools that have since come into being that has really caused that marketing to kind of be done a little bit for you. And one of the biggest uh, helps that I have seen is one that actually exists right here on YouTube. There are many channels such as the Atmospheric Black Metal channel or uh, anything that is like that that is really uh, subgenre specific that has hundreds of thousands of subscribers in some cases that just puts albums on it after getting the permission from the, uh, the bands themselves. They just put the albums onto this channel that already has that sort of built-in exposure with all of those subscribers that have come in and continue to come in. And based off of that, new ears are listening to your product. So that's a form of uh, marketing where your product being, uh, you know, allowing it to be used by something like that actually can have the residual positive benefit of them coming to your web page, whether it be Bandcamp or whether it be a page where they can buy your album, and they're going to want to do that. And that's the reason why a lot of these groups have been getting some of the exposure that they absolutely need. However, marketing is also something that's important even if you don't utilize a tool such as that. It's something that can become your new best friend and having a vibrant photo that shows everything that you have is not necessarily going to be the only thing that works these days. Once again, speaking about growing the audience by using your own personality and using some of your own silliness or perhaps uh, some of your own uh, trademark wit is going to get you just as far. We are in a generation, we are in an age where people want to hear what you have to say. And whenever you do that, that potentially could be enough of a reason for them to store that information in the back of their minds and either want to come and pick up a t-shirt, get it to the album, or go to the show. Number two, you have a better communication with the community these days. And yeah, this is definitely something that has helped save metal because it's helped spread metal. Now, this would have continued in the 1990s, though in America here, heavy metal was kind of at a rough stage. We were just about to enter into the new metal craze whenever the internet broke, and before that, there were a lot of bands that were underground that were really looking to scratch that surface and become the next big thing. And we of course know that metalcore was on the horizon in the 2000s, but of course whenever the internet broke, none of us knew that. But the communication with the community has helped actually to build that. Considering the community now can be tight-knit, whether it be on Facebook groups, Reddit groups, uh, Twitch community groups, YouTube groups, uh, Discord is a big one right now. Now, sharing music and sharing information, sharing all of this stuff is even bigger than ever. And heavy metal fans are very rabid about what they love, and they're very rabid about the genre of music to the point of... Uh, the extreme in some cases and they actually need to sort of temper it a little bit but that's really that passion is what you want it's what you need because it's a good chance that your product it's uh, really going to get uh, illuminated and you're going to get a great shine from that but this community interaction is one thing that also has helped allow the artist and the fan to get a little bit closer together whether it be through interviews whether it be through Q&A's that are done on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch Snapchat, whatever it might be, this is now something where you feel a lot closer to the artists themselves. And that closeness really breeds a lot of that, uh, you know, it breeds a lot of that love, it breeds a lot of that passion and energy. It makes you want to remain part of the thing that you are now currently a part of, which is heavy metal and which is this band. And because of all of this great information and because of all of this, you know, a great sharing of information, heavy metal has not only survived, they have thrived. And now, internationally, you can actually break borders and cross oceans with a click of a button. 
and tell somebody brand new about an album that they have never heard, and that's helping heavy metal and helping another band just right there like that, and they could easily share something back at you. So that's 1v1, but that makes not four, two. Ha! <laughs> Number one, though, based off of all that idea, file sharing is the new tape trading. I know this is a really uncomfy topic for a lot of you, considering file sharing sounds like illegal downloading, and in many ways, it can actually boil down to that. However, with the tools that are out there, there's really just, it, file sharing is everywhere. Streaming is everywhere. What do you think streaming is with Spotify and YouTube and everything like that? It's essentially like file sharing. If the file has been shared onto a platform, that way it can be shared with you. However, because of this and because of streaming and because of all of that, and because of two people coming together with their communication and saying, hey, you should really check this out, sending a RAR back and forth, this is a way that Heavy Metal and its bands have gotten tremendous exposure. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There's actually way too many Heavy Metal bands right now. There's way too many of them. There's absolutely no way that any casual fan, unless they're a millionaire, can actually go out and buy every heavy, uh, heavy metal album that comes out in the course of one year. It's First of all, it's absurd. Second of all, there's it's doubtful that you'd encounter all of them. And third of all, you probably still would run out of money. But based around file sharing, it still does something else that's positive. It does give that product a listen to or a look. And if it's on something such as Spotify or on something such as iTunes where there is a little bit of a cost that goes to the artist, it's helping that artist. But also, whenever it comes to YouTube even, I will disclose that there is a little bit of positive to that as well. And it's because of those uh, channels that I was talking about before, such as the Atmospheric Black Metal channel, where they do secure the rights to use these albums, but then the content is claimed by the artists themselves, so the revenue streams that way. So it's like a non-profit type thing, where the, uh, the uh, profits and the, the advertising share and revenue goes to that person. These are great tools, they help out bands, but also you have to remember that tape trading in the 1980s was kind of the same thing. You were taking songs from your cassette tapes and you were putting them on something else and then you were giving them to a friend. And at its core, the idea was you listen to it and you want it. It's something that builds that desire to get an artist uh, to buy their work and really support heavy metal, continue it onward, and then you yourself might want to build a tape and send it to somebody else. Internationally, it was something that happened in the 80s and now it can happen with a click of a button with those same international borders completely torn down here in the 2010s. It's amazing that the internet has actually done so much for heavy metal, considering all of the options that are out there. It's the reason why here in 2018, we're going to have so many brand new names that are talked about, and while those old legends still continue to be the legends that they are. Well, there you have it. There's five reasons why the internet actually saved heavy metal. These are all things that fans are now able to do for themselves, or ways in which the internet has helped out uh, groups get a wider audience or an international audience sooner and help them continue to make the music that they love. If you think that there was something that was missed, let me know in the comments below and discuss it with the folks. Use the communication with the community uh, opportunity in the comments box below. I'm Cover Killer Nation. I'll talk to you guys next time.